Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to look today at direct quadratic variation. It's often just called quadratic variation, um, but just wanted to call it that. Um, if, if one gets bigger, the other gets really big. And um, basically with direct quadratic variation, it's a relationship where two items, f of x and x, have an exponential relationship. So if one increases, the other increases quite a bit. It looks like this. So our function at x is equal to our constant times our input value, or that x value, squared. So you'll see that this will become large very quickly because you have x squared. Again, kind of the quadratic. All right. So let's take a look um, at what we have. We've got the equation, the function at x is equal to our constant times x squared. All right. What we're trying to do at first is find out what is that constant. We've been given one x value and one output or function of x value. So what we need to do is transform the equation so we can find the constant of variation, that value for k. So our k value, again, to do this, we just divide both sides by x squared. So our k value is the function at x divided by x squared. So right here, we're going to plug that information right into the equation, 4 divided by 1 squared. 1 squared is equal to 1, 4 divided by 1 is 4. So with this specific quadratic variation, x is, when x is equal to 1, f of x is equal to 4, and our constant is 4. And so we're going to stick that value 4 into this equation for the value of k. And then we're going to go ahead and plug in our input values, or our x values of 2, 3, and 4 into our function. So the function at the point 2 is 4 times 2 squared. I put 2 squared inside of parentheses. Um, that's not necessary. We could have just had a multiplication sign in between there because exponents get solved first. But I just want to be very clear that that's being solved the very first thing. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So the function at the point 2 is equal to 16. We input 2, we get out 16. Let's see what happens when we input the value of 3 into there. 4 times 3 squared, so 3 squared is 9, so 4 times 9 is 36. And so you see how this one is increasing a little bit, 1, 2, 3, 4. This one is increasing a whole lot for 16, 36. All right. Let's look what happens when we input the value of 4 in there. 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. And 4 times 16 is 64. And so again, it's increased significantly. So you'll see that. And that's what I'm talking about with quadratic variation, that if one increases a little bit, the input values increase a little bit, our output, or the function at that point, is extremely high. And it, it goes up quite quickly. All right. And the next type of question here, I'm going to show us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is our x values. 24, 81, 128, and 225 are our function of x values. And we're going to be asked, is this a quadratic variation? First off, quick glance. These numbers are increasing a little bit. These numbers are increasing a lot. OK. So that, at a quick glance, we could say, yeah, it sort of fits that pattern. How do we solve mathematically and show that this is a quadratic variation? What we need to do is to calculate, is there a constant of variation? And is that constant consistent with each level, with each set of numbers here? Our constant of variation is the f of x value divided by x squared. Okay, so our f of x value divided by x squared. I'm just going to go ahead and solve each row find out what our constant is. And if it's consistent throughout, then we're in good shape. All right, so f of x is 24 when our x value is 2. 2 squared is 4. So 24 divided by 4 will give us a constant of 6 for our first set of numbers. All right, let's move on to our second set of numbers. We're going to use exactly the same equation. A function at x, which is 81, divided by 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 81 divided by 9 is 9. So our constant for the second one is different. So we know these two are not quadratic variations. They're not related that way. 
Let's continue on. Our function at x over x squared, 128 over 4 squared, 128 divided by 16 is equal to 8. All right. So again, we have a different value there for our constant. Our constant, three different numbers. So this is not a quadratic variation. We could tell you that right now. Having done the first three, we're going to do the fourth one as well. 225 divided by 25 is 9. So these two could be part of a, a row, 3 and 5 here, because their constant value is 9. But for the other ones, they have different constants. Therefore, they are not part of the, a quadratic variation. Okay? And that's how you would solve for quadratic variation. It's kind of a difficult one to see. Um, and it's not as, as clear as direct linear variation, but definitely quadratic variation. You can see you increase one a little bit. The other ones are big output. And then we just need to check the constant using this equation. So a couple of things. First off, our original equation, the function at x is equal to our constant times x squared. When one increases, the other increases a lot, vice versa. You check for a constant of variation using this equation here. And this equation is just this equation transformed. So we're dividing both sides by x squared. All right. And that's just about everything to remember with quadratic variation.